RFD TV presents Gentle Giant with Pam Minnick and Katie Kaufman. This week, we're outside Phoenix, Arizona. Sunshine, the desert, cactus, and beautiful winter weather if you're a horse lover. It is ideal for a year-round draft horse program. Today, we'll introduce you to Troy Haviland, who's been driving horses and raising shires for three decades. And then we'll meet Corey Trout, who combines her passions of draft horses and fine art. Draft horses in Arizona when Gentle Giants continues. Stay with us. Welcome back to Gentle Giants from Arizona. We begin today on the Fort McDowell Indian Reservation just north of Scottsdale. It's here in this tourist mecca that Troy Haviland shares the rugged desert with Percheron, Shires, and a herd of saddle horses and a variety of wagons. piece of heaven. I mean, we're in the Sonoran Desert. We have miles and miles of Palo Verdes, swirl cactuses, staghorn choyas. The saguaros are kind of unique. Uh, the Sonoran Desert is the only place in the world that they grow naturally. Um, they figure they're about 80% water. Um, they're like a big sponge. They just absorb it when they come in. It takes, uh, there's somewhere between 50 and 75 years old before they get their first arm about 15 years for every arm thereafter. This whole place is called Fort McDowell Adventures. We do trail rides, city slicker cattle drives, we do wagon rides, cookouts, we do a lot of parades all over the valley of the state. Um, we do large corporate dinners and it's all tied in with the Fort McDowell Indian Reservation, the Yavapai Nation. I started with teams in 1981. I bought my first team in northern Utah. And I've always had a passion for teams. My grandfather was an old teamster from Montana. And I remember as a little boy sitting by him and listening to his stories, and I swore someday I'd have a team of horses. And so in 1981, after me and my wife got married, I bought my first team. And it's kind of a funny thing. I didn't know anything about teams other than what I'd listened to him from. And I called him when I bought my first team and I said, I need a set of harnesses, where do I go? And he had an old boy in Ogden, Utah, North, North Ogden, Utah, that had collected teams when the tractor started coming in. And he probably had refurbished probably 200, 250 sets of harnesses he had in his chicken coops and just in mint condition, old harnesses. So I went down and bought my first set of harnesses. Well, I grew up in northern Utah, so I love it here in the wintertime. I'm not fond of the snow anymore. Um, this year's an unseasonably warm. Uh, it's extremely dry. We have had very little, no rain at all. Typically this time of year, there's green grass out there um, growing for the range cows and wild horses, but there's none this year. It's really hot. It is nice here, and the thing I love about it is, is I hate mud, and we only have to deal with mud maybe two or three days out of the year unless somebody lets the water run over in the trough. <laughs> I raise shires. I've had been in the shires for 30 years. I've had all kinds of different shires. Um, and uh, there's 12 head of them here. And then we have a pile of black percherons. I love the shires and the percherons are probably my two favorite. I've always had shires. I just have a personal tie to them. My Shire Stallion, <clears throat> he came out of a, our old stud, which actually came from Jensen's quite a while back. He was bred out of a horse from uh, Tally Ho Shires. His name was uh, Tally Ho Big John, and um, that's his dad. And then his mother was a little mare we got from Willard Stevenson, which has passed away. He was up above Boise, and he had a little Shire mare and had this baby. He throws some great colts. They got a little bigger bone. I'm not into the shows type horse. I like them a little heavier because we use them. 
our claim to fame is we sold one gilding to Josh Mitchell a few years ago, and he worked for a couple years for him. Um, but he was just too, just naturally too hot for me. It's just not what we do. And so, uh, I mean, I like their heads down. I like them to walk. And he never did that his whole life. When we came to Arizona, I had um, one team of Shires and two saddle horses. That was in 85. And um, started it from there. We've built this business from the ground up. And um, we do, we run about 60 head of saddle horses now. And there's probably a mismatched team, 13 teams. On a normal day, we'll saddle somewhere between 25 to 30 head of horses. I'm hooking anywhere from six to eight teams a day and trying to exercise them a little bit, getting their shoulders ready to go. This time of year, we're real busy getting teams ready. We're heading to the Prada del Sol uh, in a week and a half, and we've got six teams going there. We've got three, four ups going that day, plus the six teams. Two weeks after that, we head to Tucson, where we'll hook probably close to about 120 head of horses that'll come in from all over. We've got them coming in from Colorado, Utah, people that I know that have good teams that come out and help us. A lot of them come from right here locally here in Tucson. Um, but we'll hook right close to, well, right now we've got 44 teams coming, three, four ups and six singles that we'll hook that day. The parade committee down there has a museum and they have all their own wagons. And we'll hook the horses to them and send them out on the parade. Troy certainly has a passion for draft horses, and he likes to hitch in a big way. When we return, we'll see how he hitched and drove 20 horses. Stay right here. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. You can easily see that Troy Haviland just loves to drive draft horses. He hitches several wagons every day here in the Arizona desert to entertain the visitors seeking a bit of the Old West heritage. <laughs> and he loves to feed with the team in the evenings, but he really pushed the limit when he hitched and drove 20 horses. We feed off of the tourism business here in the, in the Phoenix area. From uh, Sky Harbor Airport, I'm right at 35 minute drive. Uh, downtown Scottsdale, about the same with the traffic and stuff nowadays. Um, but that's what we base our business on is the corporate world and individuals here vacating in the winter time. Our spring breaks, our busiest time of the year, March, April, is our two busiest months. Um, we pretty much go nonstop those two months um, with the horseback riding. It's kind of seasonal for us the way things work. Our teams run really hard October, November, December. We're running four, five, six teams a night uh, somewhere in town doing wagon rides for different people. We do a lot of wagon rides and cookouts out here during that period of time also. And then this time of year it kind of shifts and goes to the trail riding from now until the end of May. And then we ship all of our horses out for the summer, the saddle horses. And then I just kind of play in the summertime with the big horses. Easy. That is my greatest passion. I love to feed with the team. I ride, drive through the horses. I can look at them, see who's doing good and who's not. And I've done that forever. Um, all We have five sons and they've all grew up here and every time I'd leave, they'd feed with the tractor. But we feed with horses. <laughs> and so I love to work my horses, and a lot of days we're so busy with the saddle horses, that's the only time I get to hook. And so I just make it a point to hook them a team every day. I loved what uh, Mr. Haythorn said a little while back in an interview on him. He says, just maybe we'll get something to learn something that day, either me or the horses. And so I like to drive them every day. 
actually use them for the Wells Fargo Stagecoaches. Me and my boys, we have two of their rigs here, and we cover a lot of the Southwest here in Arizona. We'll go a little bit into, sometimes into Nevada, once in a while into Colorado. It's, it's a great outfit, it's, it's fun to do. Um, we get to drag behind our horses with a piece of history. The stagecoaches are immaculately done, they're beautiful. Um, and it's just fun to be able to go out and represent Wells Fargo with that. I grew a great interest in big hitches, multiple hitches. These old farmers and that out on Nebraska and stuff that would do these just massive deals to pull the implements and stuff. And I thought that is just blows my mind how one person can handle that many horses. We were playing around a few years ago and me and my boys hooked 12 head. So we put them together and drove them in for a little exhibition. So the next year we did 16. So last summer, we decided we were going to go bigger, and we hooked 24. And uh, I called back to and spoke with Paul Sparrow because I wasn't sure how they hooked the 40 because what we were doing wasn't working. So we got some instruction from Paul how they did it, and that's what we did. And we hooked the 24, and oh my gosh, it was day and night difference driving them. We actually drove them into the arena. We stopped them. We actually fanned the 24. We backed them up. Uh, we done a figure eight. We actually drove them. We actually come out of the arena on a pretty good trot, all 24 head. And uh, you just, we just said, whoa, and they all shut down and let, thank heavens, or we'd have still been going around the track. <laughs> it is a rush. It really is. It's the greatest adrenaline rush in the world to be able to put that many horses together and talk to them and actually get them to respond. I have two of the most special little lead horses in the world. I mean, they are just, they're not huge but they're solid and they're go and um, they absolutely listen to every word I say when they're out there. I mean, I can, if I get in a, in a pinch, I can just say, whoa, and them two will stop everybody. We'll head to Queen Creek, Arizona to meet a lady who combines two passions, draft horses and art. Stay with us. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. Who says you can't have it all? Combining two passions, draft horses and art. Corey Trout spends her days doing what she loves, giving riding lessons and driving lessons, and bringing draft horses to life on canvas. Um, this one is the final piece in a series that I did called Resistance. And it basically went through a whole range of disciplines. This one happened to be draft horse pulling. So it was 12 pieces total. And this one was the last piece that happened to span seven pages. And so it's pastels and it's on a paper called Color Fix. It's basically kind of a sandpaper almost. So it really holds the pigment in there and allows you to put layer on layer on layer and be able to rework the surface even if you want to. I was getting ready to start full-time teaching riding lessons and I was looking for initially short stocky draft ponies essentially. So I was looking at halflingers, fjords, welshes even that are a little on the stockier side. And so we found Chewy, our halflinger mare, and she was the first one. And then from there I have my husband to blame a little bit because he likes these big horses and I always thought, oh yeah, draft horses are cool, they're nice and I had a few breeds that I kind of liked but I never really expected to own them. <laughs> and uh, from there we got Ruby, the big Belgian mare, well, big is relative, <laughs> the Belgian mare and then we got Kit the Fjord and they're just fantastic. They've got really good mellow temperaments. They have the size and bone that you need to 
carry just about anybody you can imagine. Um, the ponies are nice because they're lower to the ground and for people that are a little intimidated by the really big draft horses, they've got something that still can carry the weight but isn't too big and intimidating. So we got Ruby. She came off of Amish in the Missouri, I, I believe, and she supposedly knew how to ride and drive. So we <laughs> went and got a Meadowbrook cart from the now defunct Grumpy Dave's auction up, that was up in Cottonwood. And we hooked her to it and she was fantastic because we didn't know anything other than which harness parts kind of sort of went which place. <laughs> and from there I figured I probably should take lessons myself and really get this thing sorted. And so Ruby was fantastic. But <laughs> anyways, learned how to drive from a lady who did combined driving events and stuff like that. So very safety oriented, but also a little bit of the performance stuff. Um, when we got Kit, she also knew how to drive, and then we got Charmin, who was also broke to drive, so we kind of melded into the driving stuff as well as the riding. Well, when we have time, we go out on trail rides. We also hook them up and drive, and we're getting uh, used to driving the team now, which is exciting. Um, our boys like to get in on it, and they like to drive their horses. Kit is my middle child's horse and Ruby is the oldest child's horse. And the youngest one's only one years old so he hasn't had a chance to pick one. We do have a lot of people that come down and migrate during the winter time. And it's, it's not nice weather this time of year. It's, we've got um, a lot of the parks are, have some wide roads for those who do driving and are able to do some trail drives and stuff. And of course, we also have the Maricopa County Trail System that actually connects all of the major Maricopa County parks. Maricopa County is larger than some states. <laughs> in the summer times, obviously, it's early mornings or in the evenings. I don't have lights here, so I end up doing Early mornings, I start at teaching at six, so morning starts before that. And then kind of take a break after 10 or 11, maybe get one of mine worked, and then start up again about five when it, the sun thinks about going down and it's getting a little cooler instead of hotter. I started drawing from you know the time I could hold a pencil, but then I kept doing it. And I got really serious about it in high school, and I even, you know, I did the AP art program and created a portfolio and stuff and then I kind of had a little bit of a break to do my equine science stuff and then I started doing art education at ASU and through that you know it wasn't just you know learning how to teach it was also you had your concentration so I took a lot of drawing classes specifically took a couple of painting classes and just developed my skill and craft from there I, I really got into um, a lot of this ink work here as well as the pastels. I did the uh, poster basically for the Fjord Horse Evaluation up in Bozeman, Montana. It depicted all of the Fjord colors, there's five of them, they're not just all brown done, they have brown, black, red, white, and yellow. And it had them doing different things, it had a team of horses next to a wagon, it had um, an English rider, it had a Western rider, it was the image that was used to promote the event. You know, when I first started drawing draft horses, it's like, it was really hard because they, the proportions are definitely different. And, you know, people like to present horses as these thin, almost frail things, and trying to get your head around something that's really massive but also graceful at the same time can be difficult. But I've gotten to the point where I've drawn so many draft horses that sometimes it's a little hard to go back the other way. <laughs> try and import the Utland breed. They're a smaller draft horse. They're kind of similar to a Suffolk. The Utland actually influenced the Suffolk initially, and then the Suffolk came back and influenced the Utland slightly. They come in a few more colors along with the sorrel. They come in bay and black. And 
they're a neat little, really stocky, they're like 2,000 pounds at 15 hands. <laughs> they're pretty impressive. This one's also a Uteland in the, their traditional uh, show halter, which is usually a white halter, and then they have the, the bits actually just added on there with the bit straps. We want to thank all of you for watching Gentle Giants this week. Pam and I had a fun time here in Arizona. We sure did. What beautiful weather. We want to thank Troy Havlin and Corey Trout for allowing us to see their draft horses in Arizona. What a great place to spend the winter. Join us right back here next week on Gentle Giants. Or check us out on Facebook and see what we're up to. Bye now.